here and welcome back to another video. This channel is perfect for people who are new in property or just looking to get started or those who have already started and looking to take things to the next level. Today's video is looking at what is passive income and what is residual income? We hear about these words all the time in the property investors networks. You're probably going to lots of networking events, having conversations, and you're hearing these words, I want to have passive income, I want to have residual income, and you actually have no idea what they mean. Well today, I want to educate you on that and get you clued up so you are ready for great conversation and to also understand which one you may want for yourself if you want to invest in property or any investment for that. So. What is residual income and what is passive income? Well, residual income is a calculation to determine how much money is available after all obligations have been paid. And passive income is income that is generated with very little or no effort at all. Now, I don't know about you, but I like the sound of that one. So let's dive in deep and have a good look at what residual income actually is. So residual income is a calculation that is used. Now there's two different types of residual incomes. You have residual income that is used on a, from a personal aspect. So maybe a bank may use that to calculate whether or not you can afford a mortgage. And there's another element that is used in the business world. And that could be for equity. How much money are you getting after all your obligations have been paid after it's met the minimum rate on return? That one sounds a little bit more complicated. Yeah, and I felt the same way when I heard about that one. But don't worry, I'm gonna help you with this right now. So looking at it from the banker's perspective, a mortgage perspective, from your personal aspect, let's see what it is. So looking at residual income, what that is, is a calculation used by the banks to determine whether the loan you want is affordable for you. So what they'll do is they'll, you would come into the bank and say, hey bank, there's a house over here that I want to buy. I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got the deposit. Can you help me out? Or, or what can you help me out with? So what the bank will then do is look at what your income is. What income do you have coming in on a monthly basis? They will then look at um, what outgoings you have. They will look at what rent you have to pay on a monthly basis or what mortgage you have to pay, what bills you have in terms of loans or credit card payments, and they'll also look at what bills you have to pay. They don't take into consideration your utility bills and they don't take into consideration your food, what food payments you have to make. Food payments, you know what I mean when I say that, right? <laughs> How much money you spend on food on a monthly basis. They don't look at that. It's really what your actual fixed assets are and not necessarily your variable costs. Looking at that, they will subtract your outgoings from your incoming and that will determine what your residual income is on a monthly basis. They will then see this residual income that you have, do you have enough money then to pay for another loan from this money here? Or if it's not an loan in your first time loan, then they will look at whether you have enough money to pay for that. That is what the banks look at to determine your lendability criteria. In terms from a business perspective, your residual income or the residual income is the amount of the net income that is generated in excess of your rate of return. So for example, Bob goes and buys a house for a thousand pounds. He has rental income coming in of 50 pounds, but he has outgoings of 40 pounds. Now his minimum rate of return is he has to spend uh, paying back that mortgage of of that 40 pounds, his minimum rate of maybe maybe 40, maybe that 40 pounds, let's make it that 40 pounds to keep it simple. His then residual income would be 10 pounds because you've then, you've got 50 pounds coming in, you're spending 40 going out and you have 10 pounds left over. That would be the residual income in excess of the rate of return, that's, that's important. So that is what residual income is. I hope that's really clear for you. And if it's not, just press play and just 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 rewind this again because the ink. I'm not going to give another example because I think residual income is it's, it's just one of those things that you leave for the accountant to do. Okay, but you need to be clued up and you do need to know this. So it's important that you understand what residual income is. 
that's exactly what it is from a personal you have the two different types from the personal aspect and then you have the business aspect looking at it from an you know an equity perspective per se so when investors looking at an investment and they're trying to figure out whether it's good or not those are the type of things they look at once i take once i spend my money um, to take on this debt, right? Or you don't spend money to take on a debt, but you're buying a house. So you're going to spend money to buy a house, but that house is going to come with a loan if you're not buying for it all in cash. So you're going to have now this financial obligation. What you want to make sure is once I've spent that minimum amount that I have to pay, what is the net amount that I get from this property? Does that make sense? I hope so. Now let's look at passive income. Now, passive income is income from property that does not require any of your effort. Now, it can be income that's generated from property that doesn't require any of your effort utilizing any strategy, okay? Because you can do that with any strategy. It just depends on what position you want to play. Another example of that is so you understand a little bit better could be books, people who have written a book, someone who's created a song and they're getting ongoing royalties from these assets that they created one time only and then it pays them over and over and over and over again. I want that type of income. You work one time for it and you get it over and over and over again. Oh, yes. Give it to me, honey. Give it to me, honey. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Seriously, I'm not even joking. Give it to me. Give it to me. So it offers a fantastic element. It offers a fantastic element of financial security because you already know that it's money that's going to come in. Let me give you an example. It's around Christmas time. And all I hear is Mariah Carey. Well, however the song goes. I can sing, but I'm not going to sing that song. Because that song to me is rubbish. Rubbish. But I'm in Tesco's. I go into Sainsbury's. I go into the shopping mall. And all I hear is, oh, there's all the love. And it's like, wow, Mariah, you are getting paid, honey. Because everywhere is paying that, all the radios. And for her, she is collecting in the royalties. Those royalties is passive income for her, okay? Now, she can guarantee every Christmas I'm getting paid from these three songs that she's created that people play over and over and over again. She has nothing to worry about when around Christmas time. Or maybe she'll ask Christmas time, because I'm presuming they pay her before. I don't know when they get paid, though. I don't know how that works with the songs. But with property, making it relative to property, you would then get a buy-to-let, send it over, hand it over to a property manager, and if that property manager is managing your properties and you do nothing for them, then you have passive income coming in. You're on a winning team, baby. You've got the passive income coming in and you have to not worry about a thing. The money that you have coming in will then be, hopefully, 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 <laughs> it's enough to pay for your expenditure and you don't need to work for that, okay? So that's the kind of thing that is, that is passive income and, and that is what we all want. I think you need to be working towards that because it's a great element of financial security. I'm telling you that now. So. We've looked at residual income, we've looked at passive income, and now it's for you to determine what kind of income you want or what kind of income you can offer other people. I hope you found this video useful. If you haven't already hit the like button, like this video, hit subscribe, and do not forget to comment down below. If you have any questions, please comment down below because I will ask them, and if I don't know, I will find another way and I will answer them. Don't be shy. I hope you return for another video and stay tuned. I will see you at the top.